Good morning, you're watching PA Harness Week. I'm Charlotte McBride. Well, what a night it was at the Meadowlands Pace last week. We've got all the exciting highlights for you. Plus, we'll chat with the winning driver who you know and love and chat a little bit about his horse who's extra special. That and more coming up next in this next half hour. We head to the Meadowlands for the pace and a record performance there. You'll also see Sweet Lou and be a magician as she tries to win her first of the season. You'll also see a fantastic prep for this year's Hamiltonian. And we'll take you to Mohawk to see arguably the best trotter in the world. And let's not forget the best of Pocono and Harris, Philadelphia. It's all next. It's a little show we like to call racing's fastest paced half hour, and it all starts right now on Comcast Sportsnet. They're off. Kibasami and welcome to PA Harness. We got a great show for you this week because the harness racing season is heating up. I'm talking about at the boiling point. Woo! Talking about hot. Lots of action at the Meadowlands over the past weekend. And of course the Hamiltonian coming up in a couple of weeks. August 2nd, the best three-year-old trotting colts in the world. And guess what? They were in action this past Saturday at the Meadowlands in the form of the Stanley Dancer and the lovely Heather Vitale has that for you. Thank you very much. Now, $317,000 was the purse for this. Now, see, she made that sound like more money than it actually was. $317,000. <laughs> it sounded like $317 billion the way you did it. It was good. Thank you very much. Okay, there's three horses to watch in here. The number seven, Nuncio. Number nine, Father Patrick. And number 12. Trixton, also known as the Tactor Trio, okay? All of them are extremely talented, but the biggest superstar in here is number nine, Father Patrick. He's the two to five better's choice. He was also the number one two-year-old trotter of the year last year. Remember, voted that for the entire country. 15 wins out of 16 lifetime, lifetime starts. And uh, let's see how the Tactor Trio does in here. Nunzio leads it, and Father Patrick's up to challenge, and he pokes ahead in front. The opening quarter on the board in 27 and 2. Further back, racing a ninth as they head onto the backstretch. Sumatra, then speak the truth, is a distant tenth. Well built, gapping in 11th. After the break, Martini with muscle trails the field, and Father Patrick leads the way. Nuncio is up tight in the pocket spot under a hard hold in second, and Don Dorado left well is with the front draft. He's racing in third. Muscle Network gaps away just a touch. Now he's starting to reel in the top three. He's a tighter fourth. Trixton takes to the outside there, and Spenstead looks around and wheels to the outside side with Muscle Network coming first over. Kapow Hanover saving ground. He's fifth on the inside. Halfway home in 56 seconds flat. Rev Rock Harbor is gapping the cover flow on the outside. Skates and plates is eighth at the rail. Speak the truth. Gaps cover to the outside ninth. Sumatra is tenth. Then it's well built and Martini with Muscle trails the field and Father Patrick leads the way. Jingra mirror driving coming to three quarters keeping Nuncio locked in. Muscle Network on the outside is first over but he's two lengths from the lead. Don Dorado trapped in 124 and three for three quarters and going off stride there was Muscle Network. Trixton with four lengths to make up on the outside is racing in fourth and Father Patrick sprints for home and opens it up to a two length lead. Nunzio trying to catch him from the pocket and here comes Trixton on the outside. Father Patrick, Nunzio a length and a half away. Trixton another length back on the outside. Father Patrick almost there. Nunzio second. Team Tector one, two, three. I have to admit that earlier in the season I was totally on the Trixton bandwagon. You yeah. know what I mean? I thought that Trixton was just a better horse than Father Patrick, really, but oh, I'm telling you what, after this race, I am completely head over heels in love with oh, Father oh, Patrick. Hold on, hold on. To be fair, to be fair and balanced here, Trixton had the way outside post position. So in the Hamiltonian, things could change. It could be turned around and the other tactor guy could get the bounty. Who knows? I th that is true. And that's what does make it exciting with the th three horses because they are incredible. But um, anyway, let me get back to Father Patrick. Okay, he wins in what, 51 and three. I know you said it was hot earlier in the 
finish up. Uh, wins in 151 and 3. And oh, that hair. Look at he looks like a gorgeous supermodel coming down the stretch. You see his hair slapping in the wind. Oh, just beautiful. Anyway, uh, Yannick Jingra is the winning driver for winning trainer, of course. Jimmy Tactor second was Nuncio with John Campbell on the bike. Trixton was driven by his trainer, Jimmy Tactor himself. Now we're going back to that winning driver, Yannick Jingra. And I spoke to him about this huge race. Yannick, it's not like I didn't love Fa Father Patrick before, but I am a complete believer. Uh, tell me again, I know we've talked about how impressed you are about this horse. That was a huge mile. Oh, I definitely was. You know, I think that even the Pocono mile might even been uh, even more impressive. But uh, I mean, he's a total package. You know, he, he can do whatever you, you know I ask him to do. And uh, I mean, he's a great horse. I know with the Tactor Trio, there is a lot of talk that there might be Hambletonian eliminations. There might not be. What are your feelings on the whole Hambletonian deal? Well, the only thing I hope is that there's not like uh, 12 or 13 horses. You know, uh, I think it, that rule is not really good. Uh, you know, you, you put that kind of money and you, you're supposed to have your, your nose on the gate going for a million dollars. You know what I mean? So uh, that's the only thing I care, you know, that I hope. You know, I mean, other than that, if there's elimination, my horse is you not know, ready for it. And uh, if there is no elimination and there's 10 horses or less, I'll be happy to. Eliminations or no elimination, you think you got the Hamiltonian winner this year? I certainly hope so. I think I have, I have the horse to beat. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, if there is no elimination, then we, hopefully we draw good and uh, go from there. You know, not only do betters nowadays have to worry about their horse getting to the wire first, they got to check out and see if the hair is flying just so. Has it been conditioned properly? I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Meadowlands, big race, their signature event. It was race nine on the card Saturday. It was the $776,000, or as Heather would say, $776,000 Meadowlands pace. Is that about it? I like that. Cool, okay. All right, number two, J.K. End of an Era with Brian Sears was the five, three to two chalk. Number three, he's watching two to one with Tim Tietrich. All the rest, well, they were longer. Let's see what happens with a call, Sam McKee. And Lion somewhere is the early leader. Opening quarter was fast in 25 and three. Luck be with you is right there racing in second. About two lengths further back to J.K. End of an Era third. He's watching, waits for him to go. Just sitting there in the two wide flow. National Death to his inside is racing in fifth. Stuck out there three deep is sometimes said on the outside. Tell it like it is, trying to thread the needle in traffic between horses. Jet Airway is racing in eighth as they tighten up down the back stretch toward the half. Always be Mickey Ninth on the outside. He's seven lengths from the lead. The half in 53 and two. And Duwap Hanover trails the field. And Lion somewhere continues to front him. JK End of an Era is coming to call. Floating first over. Up to the leader's wheel. Now just half a length away with three eights to go. Locked in on the inside. As luck be with you. He's watching second over, but is in tight between horses there. Still three wide. Sometimes said who's been rimmed the entire way. And they're coming to three quarters. Lion somewhere. Jingra calling on him. And he leads it by two and 120 and three. They're at the top of the stretch. Lion somewhere is out there with a two length lead. JK End of an Era trying to wear him down. Luck be with you toward the inside. Here comes He's Watching. And He's Watching is charging hard on the outside for T Drag. He's Watching. Bolts pass to the lead. Always be Mickey on the outside. Tell it like it is right there with him. He's Watching wins the Meadowlands pace. An amazing story here. He's Watching who cost $3,000 new. I mean, if you got a 1977 Nash Rambler, it might cost more than three grand these days. I don't know. 3,000 bucks for a horse, and to get one like this, it is a truly amazing story. Would you agree, Heather? Oh, absolutely. And not only has he made a lot of money on the racetrack, but also he'll be a stallion someday, and he's going to make more money. So, you know, yeah, $3,000 is a yearling. And uh, by the way, uh, one of his co-owners, uh, Joe Mascara Jr., his father, Joe Mascara Sr., of course, just passed away at the yeah. age of 90, and they were really into the breeding business. And, well, after the horse won his elimination, uh, the junior went to his father's house, and he was very, very ill, and his father and his son sat down, and they watched the elimination several times, and the father said, uh, you know, Great horse, great drive, and just a really touching story. He was able to see that horse win his elimination. Wasn't around, he's passed away for the final, but still, um, just incredible. He watched incredible. him up in heaven. Yes, absolutely, yeah. And I have to mention, Joe Mascara Jr. has been around this game and owning horses since the old Liberty Bell, Brandywine days in the Delaware Valley, and God rest his soul, and I know he's up in heaven smiling. Okay, he's watching, got a dream second over trip, then sprang off cover to win by two and one, 46 and four. This was the fastest 
fastest race time in the history of the sport. Well, it tied. Three others tied it. It yeah. was some beach somewhere. Holbrook, Holbrook Hanover. Yes. Mm -hmm. And come on. Oh, my God. I'm stuck. Laura we needy. Yeah, that's right. Last year. Really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I know this game, babe. Wow. My memory's really slipping. Okay. I got you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's my excuse, not yours. Okay. Always be Mickey. One of those seven to one third shots was three deep for the mile. Closed with a rush and just nip, tell it like it is for second. And our Charlotte McBride caught up with winning driver Tim Tietrich, who obviously is very excited about the prospects of he's watching in the future. All right. Thanks, guys. Timmy, an incredible night for you at the Meadowlands pace with he's watching. Take me through that race. I know you expected great things from that horse, but did you expect what he was able to offer? Well, I mean, world records are hard to get, you know, and I didn't expect that right off the top, but uh, I was just expecting for a fair shot and uh, a clean trip, and, you know, we got all that, and my horse really responded and raced, uh, raced his heart out. You got that world record, but did you feel like maybe he could have even given more? Well, he paced all the way to the wire on himself, and uh, he was well in hand, and, you know, he raced uh, like the champion that he is so far, so uh, I'm very happy with his effort. And many people might not know the story of this horse, only purchased for $3,000, and... Wow, the winnings they've been able to get out of this horse, incredible. What kind of story is that, especially for this sport? Well, I think it's great. Anytime that uh, a little guy can do good in this business, when they can only spend 3000 and your return investment is three, four, five, six million, who knows what the end result will be on this horse. But, you know, it, it's pretty cool and exciting and uh, just a great story. For you, what do you enjoy most about being in the sulky with this horse? Uh, you know, anytime you're in the big races, it's an honor. And, uh, you know, when you get to win, win win the big races, that's what you're in the game for. You worked hard to get to that spot. And, you know, I've been fortunate enough to win it four times, and it's not an easy race to win. So, uh, you know, I'm just it's, it's glad to be in those races and get to compete at the high level of our sport. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Charla. And Timmy Tietrich, he has a live drive for the rest of the year. <laughs> Lucky him. Isn't that neat? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> I know because he never gets live drives. Never. It's like crazy. Whoa, Timmy on a live drive. Amazing. Yeah. Stick around when we come back. We're going up to the Poconos. Got some exciting harness racing action in your face. Go the way. Scott Rocks wins the early battle for George Napolitano Jr. Tonight it's race night. the biggest events roll like thunder all season long. At Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs, race night is your time to shine. Racing fans, she's Heather Vitale, I'm Steve Ross, and you have your eyeballs on PA Harness Week as we go up to the Poconos, as we promised, and race nine on Saturday, and the lovely Heather's got that for you. Thank you, thank you. I'm You're always lovely today. Okay, nine winners of $25,000, last five, the first is $21,000, number five is Scott Rocks, um, a one to two favor, climb up, climbing up in class, but he's coming off of two huge wins, number one, E Street Plan, second choice with Anthony Napolitano on the bike, and then number three is Better's Glass. Third choice, taking a step down in class for this one. Scott Rocks, the one to catch on the backside, leads at three parts of a length. Are you ready to rock? Putting on the pressure. Up the rail. East Street Plan still saving ground third to the outside. Malak Yuswad and gets the cover fourth. Better's Glass is nowhere to go. To the outside, the ladies' man, Victor Kirby, three quarters, 121 and one. And Scott Rocks pours it on for George Napolitano. Opens up by four and looking for more. East Street Plan is next down along the inside. And Better's Glass now shaking loose. It's all in a rub. Scott Rocks. Scott Rocks had to work hard as a rock to get the front. He was actually three wide coming around that first turn and has to get up there. First quarter, 26 and two, but he's able to get the breather. But then paces right on a third quarter, 121 and one. Mm. Then the Chris Oaks trainee just takes off, wins in 148 and three. That is a national season's record. It equals it for four-year-old pacing horse, or scaldings, I'm sorry. 
That's Sorry, dude, you're not a horse anymore. Technically, you're a gelding. <laughs> Hate to break that to you, the but anyway. Unkindest, the unkindest cut of all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway. <laughs> that wasn't that. That did equal a national season's mark on a 5 8 mile track. We should not be laughing about that. No, I'm sorry, it's not dude. Funny. All right, it's not funny. <laughs> Second one is E Street Plan. Third one to um, Better's Glass. <laughs> Better's what? Glass. Never mind. All right. All right. Saturday's 10th at Pocono, a $25,000 preferred handicap pace. Number seven, Dancing Yankee with Tyler Buter was going for win number 12 out of 19 starts in this 2014 campaign. And no matter how you shake that hat, that's good. Number eight, do me, do me that again. Recent conqueror of cut and treacherous was seven to two with Simon Allard. Number one, Clint Westwood with Aunt Nap was eight to one. And with a call, it's the king. The favorite is the one to catch, and that's Dancing Yankee. He hangs on to a full length lead. The battle for second, Digital Z-Tam on the outside. Abelard Hanover at the rail, heads apart for second and third. Getting into it, Emeritus Maximus with the cover of the outside fourth. Dropping back at the rail, Clint Westwood is fifth, and Fat Man's Alley three quarters, 122 and three. They're at the top of the stretch, and they straighten out and drive for the wire. Dancing Yankee looking to hit a home run here for Tyler Buter, leads it. Abelard Hanover trying to get there in the deep stretch. It's all Dancing Yankee. Dancing Yankee did indeed get win number 12 out of 19 starts in this 2014 campaign, but he got hung on a 26 and 4 first quarter before making the top. From there, the chalk was in cruise control, winning easily in 149 flat. Abelard Hanover off a of 12 to 1 with Matt Romano got the belly number three. Digital Z Tam, a 34 to 1 bomber with Tom Jackson, was third. And when we come back, action of plenty from right here at Harrod Dice. That's their new slogan. Yes, I They're love big. it. All right, don't go away. <laughs> When it's your time to shine, what will you do? At Mohegan Sun, wherever tonight takes you, it's your time to shine. Hi there, welcome back to PA Harness Week, and we're going to stay right here at Harris, Philadelphia, and we have race nine, and Heather's got that for you. Yeah, it's Pennsylvania Sire Stakes, two-year-old pacing fillies here, just shy of $62,000 is the first Number six is Southwind Roulette, six to five, coming off a very impressive debut. She actually won a PA All-Stars race. And then number seven is Green Tree Alexis. She's seven to five, one, I know your daughter's name. I knew that was coming. I am so on that horse, I'm all over that horse. <laughs> um, she won her last start, um, but this is her first Sire Stakes event. Ginger Tree Alexis opens up by two over Southwind Roulette. By the way, third special package inside fourth, Maywine Blue Chip, three better than Ladies Critic, who's next. Racing in sixth, Harmony Hudson, the trailer, last of all, seeking. Nirvana, 27 and 3 for the quarter. They come towards us for the first time. And with the lead by two, it's Southwind Roulette. Here comes or make that ginger tree. Alexis, Southwind Roulette, those quickly moving up to force the lead change. Back to second, ginger tree. Alexis, special package on the inside. Third as they go around the turn. Two lengths back to Maywine. Blue chip in fourth. Break of four to ladies. Critics severely gapped in fifth. Harmony Hudson is next. Trailing the field, last of all, seeking Nirvana. Ten lengths away from the front stepper. 55 and four for the half. 28 and one for the second quarter. They race up the back stretch. Southwind roulette by one. Ginger Tree Alexis in the pocket spot second. Special package a tighter third. Maywine Blue Chip a tighter fourth. Here comes Ladies Critic now. Driving up to the outside a length and a half better than Harmony Hudson who stays home seeking Nirvana's on the move from the back with about six lengths of work to do. Around the far turn they go. Southwind roulette. Ginger Tree Alexis now pops out of the pocket. Three quarters, 125. 29 and one 
for three quarters. Ginger Tree Alexis Dixon O's in front. Back to second. Southwind Roulette. Off the cone. Special package. Therm three links back to Maywine Blue Chip as they straighten the way. Harmony Hudson's off stride in the back. It's Ginger Tree Alexis, the new leader. Special package picks up the chase now. Ginger Tree Alexis by a length. Green Tree Alexis sets off the first teletimer. Then she ends up yielding to Southwind Roulette as they go past the stands. Coming around the last turn, the uh, Green Tree Alexis comes right out of the two hole. Goes past the pace setter. Ends up winning in 153 and 1 with a Yannick Jinger on the bike for trainer Steve Cook. Special package got the place spot. Southwind Roulette was third. I told you my kid would win. Yeah, I know. My kid Green Tree. She's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, race 11, Harris Philly, a $61,000 Pennsylvania Sire Stake for two-year-old Pacey Phillies. Number six, eloquently stated with Yannick Jingra for Ron Burke was one to five. Number five, Melanie's Sharkette was five to two with Dave Pallone. The rest all double-digit bombers, and here's the call. Eloquently stated, brushes to the lead. Back to second is Gold Beach, a link back to Dr. Terror in third, two links back to Melanie Sharkett at the inside, fourth. Outside, Terrain of Fool looking to flush cover Fimp. She has as they go around the turn. Angel Plus back to the inside, sixth, and Sophisticated Kelly trails the field, and eloquently stated, trying to get away here. 57 for the half, 29 for the quarter. Up the back stretch they go, eloquently stated, leads it by two lengths inside gold beaches second up on the outside here comes dr terror driving up now in third length and half back to terrain of fool who saves ground that was steered to the outside fourth melanie sharket doing some steps there and is back to fifth inside angel plus is next in the trailer sophisticated kelly three quarters on the board 125 28 for three quarters eloquently stated leads it by a half a length the outside dr terror trying to come on second length and half back to gold beach in third Trying to come three wide again is Melanie Sharkett. Saving ground, Angel Plus. They straighten the way for the stretch drive. Uh, eloquently stated up by two lengths now. Dr. Tear on the outside trying to come on. Gold Beach is up the inside. Now Eloquently stated is getting tired. Dr. Tear on the outside. Eloquently stated sat a spell before going to the front by the half, but it was number two, Dr. Terror. I know it's not a very feminine name for a three-year-old Philly Pacer, but Dr. Terror nonetheless. A 19-to-1 shot with Mark McDonald, who sprung the upset. Uh, got up to Nick the Chalk right where it hurts most on the wire, winning in one 54 and four. Eloquently stated was second. Melody Shark get close for third. The 2-6 no-brainer exacta returned $144 for a $12 investment. Not bad and not chopped liver, Heather. Okay, All right. for gizzards, All right, not whatever. Gizzards, yeah. <laughs> and when we come back, more action from the Meadowlands, and we'll also see the big horse in action, Sebastian K from north of the border. Go away. Popping the pocket, here comes Archangel to take on Sebastian K as they come to three quarters. The world is full of compromises, but not here. Not on this day, not in this race, not in this sport. Every bet is a hope, return on investment, comes in seconds. This is Harness Racing. We welcome you to the Harness Racing Fan Zone. See it all for yourself. Feel it in all the passion. Share that experience with others. The Harness Racing Fan Zone puts you in the driver's seat. Welcome back. This is Heather and Steve and PA Harness Week. And we're going to go back to the Meadowlands as promised. Race 8 on Saturday was named for one of the great guys in our sport, Billy Houghton. Yes, it was. And it's a great race, too. It goes for $463,300. I know. Don't you love that? <laughs> All right, number three, Sweet Lou, even money favorite. He has won five in a row. And believe me, they were all races so you know the best competition he's been racing against in the entire country number two captain treacherous two-time pacer of the year but having a little hard time against some of the big boys here some of the older horses he's racing against this year number four is uh, state treasurer ships in from canada and he's had some monster miles up there let me just say number 10 happens to be my boo foiled again <laughs> richest harness horse ever captain treacherous to the front thinking out loud applying immediate pressure and sweet lou is now perfect Perfectly positioned and looms the danger second over on the outside. Better's Edge is racing in third. State Treasurer is third over. 
53 seconds for the half mile marker. Both the doors pinned on the pylons with no place to go. Foiled again, fourth over on the outside. Moving up to his inside and traffic is captive audience. Clear Vision is back to the inside, racing in ninth and Sunshine Beach 10th, fifth over trailing the field. They're double tiered, five in, five out and Captain Treacherous leads the way. Thinking out loud right at his throat on the outside is second. Locked in at the rail is Better's Edge and Sweet Lou is poised on the outside, second over. 121 for three quarters. The captain trying to fight off the pressure at the top of the stretch, but thinking out loud is hanging in there first over. It's Captain Treacherous dead game. Up on the outside, Sweet Lou is coming off cover. Looking to rally up the rail, Better's Edge. It's Sweet Lou who powers pass for Pierce. Better's Edge grabs the front first, but then Captain Treacherous, he's ready to get out there, go to the lead. But as soon as he gets there, he's already got thinking out loud right next to him, okay? So um, they're, they're just challenging each other, thinking out loud and Captain Treacherous. But thinking out loud is not the horse that Captain Treacherous should be worried about. It's the horse behind thinking out loud. And that is Sweet Lou who gets a great trip. When they get to the stretch, I mean, Sweet Lou just swells up like a baseball player hitting a home run. Yeah, just, you know, goes 147 and one. He came home in 25 and four. Hello. All right. Yeah. All right. Winning driver, Ron Pierce. Winning trainer, Ron Burke. By the way, Ron Burke says that they're, this is the best horse, not in the country, mm -hmm. in the entire world, okay, Ooh. in the entire galaxy. Captain Treacherous, got to give it up to him. This is a really tough group. Uh, he ended up getting third. Better's Edge, by the way, another Ron Burke trainee. He was second. Okay, Saturday's 10th of the Meadowlands. The Miss Versatility for Top Class Mares. Number four, Be a Magician, who's winless in 2014 after going undefeated 17 for 17 in 2013, was even money with Brian Sears. Number seven, Classic Martin, the Tim Teacher, two to one. Number five, Perfect Alliance, nine to two with Dave Miller. The field was so tough that even Maven, how great she was, was eight to one in this race. And Maven gets a little separation. She's two lengths in front on the turn. In the pocket spot is Perfect Alliance racing in second. Dorsey is grinding first over. Be a magician riding that cover. She's second over, about three and a half lengths from the lead. Classic Martine jammed in. Charmed Life is five lengths away, third over on the outside. Racing in seventh is bouncing backs, and the trailer is hand over bell. 124 and three, a rated third quarter for Maven and Maven looks to kick away at the top of the stretch. Dorsey edges to the outside with two lengths to make up. Be a Magician is coming on on the outside. Charm Life racing in fourth. Maven under pressure. Be a Magician charging hard on the outside. Dorsey right there between them. Be a Magician. Dorsey, Charm Life on the outside. Be a Magician to win it. All right, here's the deal. Number eight, Maven with Yang Xingra went to the front and stayed there till the stretch when the cavalry came charging. Be a Magician got to the wire first. First, just nipping number one, Charmed Life, often nearly 70 to one with Brent Miller and Nick in 151 and one. Another bomb, Dara Say, a 28 to one shot with Corey Callahan, got third. And now we go north of the border and Heather's got one of the limbs of the prestigious Maple Leaf Trot don't you, baby? I do. And, of course, the talk of the industry is this horse named Sebastian K. All right, I've nicknamed him the Swedish swag master. He's the fastest trotter of all time. Goes into this race four out of four wins out of four starts in America. And just when you think he's going to win again, well, he does. <laughs> With trainer driver Axe Von Sid in the sulky, they go right to the lead. They lead all the way, and they win by four lengths in 152 and four. That's like a training mile for this horse. Creed team was second, Archangel. He had to fit, settle for third. And um, by the way, he's the oldest horse, Sebastian K is eight years old, the oldest horse going into the Maple Leaf final. I'm waiting for him to take on Pacers. The heck, he beats these trotters up. Take on some Pacers. Get some real challenge going on there. Okay. The By the way, the second limb up uh, for the Maple Leaf trot was won by Market Chair, setting up an incredible final. We'll have to see what happens. It's all exciting. That's going to do it for this edition of PA Harness Week. And for all of us here, Bruce Casella, Charlotte McBride, Heather Vitale, I'm Steve Ross, reminding you to pick up the pace, just a taste. Get yourself high on harness. It's only natural.